in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, roughly 2,500 miles northeast of Australia, lie the ruins of a once great ancient city, Nan Madal, consisting of hundreds of man-made islets off the eastern coast of Micronesia. It has been dubbed the eighth wonder of the world. The site of Nan Madal on the island of Pompeii in Micronesia is one of the strangest places on the planet. It's an 11 square mile complex composed of over 250 million tons of basalt logs. They're floating on a submerged coral reef. They're 18 feet long, four feet in diameter, and are stacked 40 feet up in the air. Why did they do this, and how did they do this? Today, the site lies abandoned and shunned by the local Micronesians, who consider it haunted. Nan Madal is one of these disappeared civilizations. It's fascinatingly interesting. This seems to have been the center of power of a uh, major civilization, and yet it also seems that it might have been built on earlier civilizations that are lost in time. Since stone is difficult to accurately date, no one knows for certain when it was constructed or how it was built. When you ask the local population, where were these blocks quarried? In unison, they will tell you from across the island and that they were flown across the island. According to legend, twin sorcerers of giant proportions came down from the sky and floated above the site and positioned the basalt columns as they desired. A legend that's very similar to the same story at Pumapunku. When I hear stories like that, I wonder, well, perhaps we have another example of what I refer to as misunderstood technology. As with other sites like Pumapunku, Baalbek and the Kori Kancha. Legend says that these structures were not the first to exist here, but instead were built above a much older city. The mystery of Nanamadol is even more intriguing when we factor in the local legend that states that it was built on an earlier civilization called the Kanamweso, which is submerged below water but still has those same basalt megaliths. Objects that appear to be basalt columns have in fact been found beneath the ocean at Nan Madal. And those who have studied the columns, both above and below the water, have discovered a curious electromagnetic anomaly. There's a strong magnetic field in every single one of the 250 million tons of basalt there. You can take a compass and run it along these basalt blocks, and your compass will just spin as you move it along the blocks. Also, it's thought that the site itself is a special power spot and an energy vortex, and that's why Namadal is built there. And this legendary sunken city called Canamweso as well. The local population also reports many, many sightings of orbs and lights that have been seen hovering around Nan Madal. Is it because of the magnetic spectrum of Earth? And you have to wonder if through magnetism the stones were transported in the first place, because they were transported through the air. Some ancient astronaut theorists suggest that elevated electromagnetic energy present at Nan Madal was not only a powerful tool used to move the giant basalt columns, but that it may also have been the reason that extraterrestrials helped the locals to build here in the first place. Could it be that there was a sacred kind of part of the site there where they were connecting with the gods? You know, not just through visionary experiences, but actually something in the land like a, a magnetic hotspot or a vortex. We hear the word vortex in science fiction, popular culture, all the time. And a vortex is just a mathematical thing that describes a swirling motion. An electromagnetic field can be formed in a vortex. 
you could create a vortex that would enable transporting information from somewhere else to here at the speed of light or faster than the speed of light. And if there are places on the earth where these types of vortexes may be stronger than others, you can see people going there to build structures that maybe altered the electromagnetic field of the local environment. Was there even some kind of portal or vortex present in some of these sacred places? If that's the case, we have to question these principles of oracle sites, megalithic temples. Were they built to harness this, to be these communication portals between these different places? There is no question in my mind that these are much older sites than we think and that they were spots for extraterrestrial communication a long, long time ago.